Welcome to our first month in our intuitive textile challenge. So I have a, some canvas drop cloth from my home improvement store. I'm just going to cut a square. I'm going to cut this approximately eight and a half by 11. My pages are not going to be exact and it doesn't bother me if they're different. This drop cloth fringes really nice and so I anticipate them to being a little bit smaller. So this is my page. Get a little bit of that off. And I save these. These make great texture on top of your page. So with that, I have some upholstery samples that I picked up at my thrift store. So I'm going to cut out some leaves with some of the green. That one looks fun. And we're going to use some paints and some stamps to mark the background. I am using regular craft paint for this. This is a Dale Rowney medium green. And I am going to thin that out a little with the Folk Art Floating Medium. This is um, an extender for the paint and it gives it a, tra a translucent quality. Just going to put a little bit in. I have a leaf stamp and I will put some felt under my canvas. A good rule of thumb whenever you're stamping or mark making is the hard and soft rule. So if you have a hard stamp, you need a soft background to press on. If you have a soft stamp, you need a hard background. This stamp is a rubber stamp, so I may try it both ways to see which one gives me a better, a better stamp. I'm just right now trying to protect my cutting mat. So I'm going to put a little bit of that green paint on my brush. And I'm just dabbing that on. And I will take a coffee filter and dab some of that off. And I want this to come off the edge. So I'm going to stamp. I like that. A little mu too much paint there. I'm going to try to pull some of that back with a clean brush. There we go. Let's try it a little without the felt. See if that harder surface changes the way it looks. Maybe a little. All right, 
I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to pull some of these strings to get this nice fringy edge. And we'll sew around the edge to keep that from continuing to fringe. I'm going to take this really thick brush and I'm going to dry brush that same green around the edges. Just continue. The drop cloth takes paint very nicely. Something else that would be nice would be a tea dye or a coffee dye on this uh, drop cloth. I think it would take that nicely as well. I really like the thought of making that edge look worn. So I went and uh, got some brown, just some ground cra brown craft paint. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it and a little bit of this floating medium, just because I want it transparent. Okay, I'm gonna mix that up. All right, cross your fingers. I'm dabbing off some of the paint up on my palette. I don't want marks too strong. I really just kind of want that fringe. I want it to look old and worn. Keeping the center kind of brighter. just kind of build it up. To add a little bit more texture, I am going to take a little bit of this bubble wrap and just slightly add that to it with the dry brush. Yeah. So 
So I did that very lightly first just to see what it would do and then I pressed a little bit harder and there's barely any paint on the bubble wrap. But I do like the way that looks. So we're adding some texture. Very subtle. this um, mesh that covered a package of clementines. This makes a really unique shape. So I am going to take, let's see, all of my brushes are wet. Let me grab a dry one. All right, so I have a dry brush and I'm just gonna grab a little bit now this mixed a little with the green, so I've got like an olive green color going on here. And like I did before, I'll do it lightly at first just to see what it looks like. It's a little dark. Let's start down here. If it's going to be dark. I'd rather the heaviness be towards the bottom. I like it. Let's add some more. This is turning out very organic, very natural colors. Okay, I took a look at the background that we painted from our drop cloth and I was looking at this stamp of a dragonfly and I thought a dragonfly would look really nice. It kind of goes with the painted backgrounds and or papers that we made and the paint and shears. And so I'm going to sketch out this dragonfly a little bigger and um, see if I can pick some of these that may translate as the dragonfly on here. This is a very quick, not precise sketch. When we get to the machine, I want the machine to do the sketching. So I can see we have this deli paper. This deli paper might be nice for his body. The sheer may be nice for the wings. We could double up the sheer on top of this one. So I'm going to play with these a little bit and um, see if I can trace these onto some of these papers and we'll see what we go. When we add the machine stitching, I think that's when these are really going to come to life. All right, I traced the picture that I drew onto the fabric for the wings. I used, this is the fabric we had on the uh, page protector, and I used some of the, the spotty areas to get these wings. I used a bit of the deli paper that we used the fun foam stamp so I could get the stripes for his body and his head. And I used the sheer curtains for the overlay over these wings. And now I'm going to adhere it to my painted backdrop, I mean drop cloth with some acrylic matte medium and I have a dedicated brush to matte medium and I'm going to smooth it out with the key card. Get that put down. Do that. And 
And even though the background is textured, the um, deli paper and the matte medium, it, it goes down really nice. Nice and smooth. You can also see my tracing lines with this, but I plan to stitch this down with black thread. I'm going for a very sketchy look, and so that won't matter. Okay, I have my wings down. I have the shears that are overlay. I really like the metallic paint, how that is showing through. Now we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we are going to sketch the th by thread painting on top of this. And if you're not familiar with thread sketching, thread painting, free motion stitching, I can tell you how that works. So here's my drawing of my dragonfly. And if you can imagine that this is your fabric and this Sharpie is your needle. So your needle is on your machine and instead of moving the Sharpie, we are going to move the fabric. So the needle stays in one place and we move the fabric under. And you'll see that better at the sewing machine. Okay. So I have black thread in my machine. I have white thread in my bobbin. The foot that I have on my machine is a free motion foot or a darning foot. And most machines will come with a foot like this. Some of them may be clear, some may be open, but you want something that has a little spring. The feed dogs on your machine are these two metal um, teeth that run through here. If your machine has the ability, you want to lower your feed dogs. Um, many times when I'm free motion stitching, I forget to lower them, so I know that you can free motion stitch without doing that. I have a button on the side that has lowered these feed dogs. The feed dogs are there to pull your fabric through under the presser foot, and we want to control the fabric. I do have a sample piece of fabric here. I have a piece of craft foam and just a piece of cotton fabric. And I'm just going to lower my presser foot. I'm going to hold the thread. This is just so I don't get a knot. And I don't care about the back of this because I'm going to sew this down to a background. So I just want to make some shapes. So I'm just going to begin sewing and I'm going to make some leaf shapes. Now, when you first start free motion stitching, you may have larger stitches because it's the you have to find the rhythm between pressing the, the pedal for the sewing machine and moving the fabric. You just don't want to stop the pedal and continue to move the fabric. You may break a needle. So all I'm going to do is just make a few stitches. And I am moving the fabric. I am drawing with Other thing to think of if your machine has a needle down which means that when it stops stitching the needle is still down into the fabric that's a great option to have when you're thread painting something like this so I am going to begin on one of the wings I'm going to put my presser foot down 
and I am just going to sketch. Now, I want this to look very sketchy and very organic, so we are just going to go for it. All I really want to do is hold this fabric down. I'm not going right around the edges. I'm going to circle the center. I could go slow. There's my needle down. Just trying to catch all the pieces. All right, I'm going to come out the body, and I use my hands almost like an embroidery hoop to hold this down. And I'm sewing right through the deli paper. He's got a body. It's like one of my eyes tilted up there. And I'm going to go around the eyes twice. The first time I'm going right on the paper, the second time I'm going outside the line. Get me that, that sketchy look. my drop cloth is very fringy and ravelly I do want to put a stitch around the outside edge and this gives me the opportunity to get sketchy again so I'm going to start at the bottom and the first time I go around I am just going to do a straight line again the feed dogs are not pulling so I have to pull the fabric again and the second time I'm going to add some interest to it. So I'm going to get a good grip on there and I'm just going to jiggle it and loop it and do some crazy corners. I may come in tend to do some loops around the corners. And... This vine is coming up in here. Let's follow that. There we go. 
Okay, here is my page. I uh, did cut away some of the felt from the back so it doesn't show. We, or at least I'm not, going to finish any of my backs. The binding method that I'm going to use will put two pages back to back and you won't see the back. If you choose to finish yours a different way, maybe putting right sides together so all the way around and turn it so your back is finished, um, you may want to do that differently. The felt is just there to give my stitches something to grab. It gives us a little bit of cushion so I get nice even stitches. But I like this first page. It works for me. I did some of the painted papers we did earlier. I wanted to show you after they're pressed. These are so nice. These coffee filters were wrinkly. I will not iron any piece of clothing but Give me a coffee filter that's been painted and I love it. These turned out really nice and I hope to use these in another month's lesson. Here's some of the fabric. This is the fabric that we scrunched. It's got a nice hand dyed look. Here's another one. And you can see we did some mark making on this. Even though the wet fabric had it kind of faded out, I really like being able to see the mark making in the background it adds a lot of interest and the the sheer that we put on the pillow bubble wrap that's nice as well so I hope you enjoyed this page um, the challenge for this month is to paint a background and add a motif you can hand stitch it you can machine stitch it or you can just glue it down.